white as snow upon the wings of heaven's love past the planets and the stars leave this lonely world of ours escape the sorrow and the pain and fly again gentle happiness far too beautiful for this cross over to the other shore there's peace forevermore and hold this memory bittersweet until we meet fly fly do not fear
Trials and temptations Is there trouble A pleasant good afternoon to everyone. Thank you. At this time, I would like to invite all of the persons seated outside, or standing, sorry, outside, to please come into the church as we are about to commence the proceedings for this afternoon. On behalf of the family of Anna Gatha Brevoy, I welcome all persons here present, as well as those joining us via the online link to the funeral mass of our beloved Anne Agatha Brevoy this afternoon, here at our church at St. David. I would invite everyone to check their mobile phones at this time to ensure that they're either in the off position or silent, as you can very well appreciate that it can cause a disturbance or disruption to the proceedings when we enter into the Mass, which is a solemn time for us all. The restrooms, should you need to use one, are to my right. Out here, you can access them through the door at the center here. There are two restrooms and you can access them there. To start off this afternoon's proceedings, I'll invite the grandson of our dear Agatha and Brave Boy, Stefan Brave Boy, who will deliver the eulogy. I would like to start. Good afternoon, everybody. 
I'd like to start with a poem which best encapsulates my grandmother. Age is a quality of mind. If you've let your dreams behind, if hope is cold, if you no longer look ahead, if your ambitious fires are dead, then you are old. But if from life you take the best, and in life you keep the jest, if love you hold, no matter how the years go by, no matter how the birthdays fly, you are not old. My grandmother died young. Anne Agatha Braveway was born on the 6th of November, 1947, to Julia Braveway. She pursued her primary education at St. David's RC School. Upon successfully completing, she then embarked on a journey to England. There, she went by herself and pursued nursing. From then on, she was a woman of service. She helped so many, countless, countless people. But her ambition was large, so she didn't stop there. She then pursued mental health nursing. If anyone knows that profession, they know it's very heavy. But like I said, she kept the jest. She'd done it with grace. She'd done it with a smile that you will all be familiar with. But she didn't stop there. She then went into social work, studied further. And then she went into mental health social work where she battled many a time, stopping people from being sectioned and taking the social aspect of a person to justify their actions. She was able to see more than just what's in front. My granny was an inspiration. She inspired many with her stories and more with her acts of kindness. From the many she helped through her work to the countless she gave to with an open heart. I don't think I really understood the genius of a woman who was able to selflessly live for the future and for her future. She used to leave a prayer above the toilet, and it read, I expect to pass through this world but once. Any good thing, therefore, that I can do, or any kindness I can show to any fellow creature, let me do it now. Let me not defer nor neglect it, for I shall not pass this way again. She embedded that in myself and my family to ensure you help others. And for that, I'm eternally grateful, internally grateful. There will not go a day where her name will not be mentioned. And her words of wisdom that many have heard, which she got from her mother, and she was, she was always willing to tell me. And the day will not pass where I do not utter the name of Anne Brave Boy. Thank you, Stefan. And in anything and everything, we must also give thanks. I know it's coming at a weird time at the start, but of course we're grateful for all of your presence here with us as we celebrate the life of our dear Anne and we remember who she was to all of us and the service that she gave to our communities. At this time, I invite her daughter, Carol Mathlin, to give a special word of thank you.
afternoon, everyone. As we gather here today to bid farewell to a remarkable woman, I stand before you with a heavy heart, yet filled with gratitude to a express our collective appreciation. We are here to celebrate the life of a woman who was not just my mother, she was a grandmother, a great-grandmother, a sister, an aunt, and friend to countless. She wore many hats with grace and love touching lives in ways that words can hardly express. To Father Jerry and Father Patrick, thank you for your comforting words and spiritual guidance during this difficult time. Your prayers have been a source of solace and strength for us all. To the friends and families who have traveled from near and far, who are with us today, your presence is a testament to the love and respect you held for her. Your support has not gone on notice, and we are deeply grateful. In her memory, let us remember not just the fact that she is no longer with us, but also the love, wisdom, and kindness that she shared with us. Her spirit lives on in each of us, in the lessons she taught us, and in the love she gave us. As we part ways today, let us carry her memory in our hearts, remembering not with sadness, but with joy and love she brought to our lives. Thank you to everyone for the blue, beautiful flowers, which I know she would deeply love, because we all know she loved flowers. And thank you for being here today. Your love and support means more than words can express. May her soul rest in peace. Thank you, Carol. I'll just ask the musicians just to give us something um, light as I invite the family and relatives of our dear Anne Brave Boy to proceed to the back for the final viewing before we actually commence the Mass.
Please stand, let us pray. Listen to our prayers, Lord, as we humbly beg your mercy that the soul of your servant Anne, whom you have called from this life, may be brought by you to a place of peace and light, and so be enabled to share the life of all your saints through Christ, O oh Lord. I know that my Redeemer lives and that on the last day I shall rise again and in my flesh I shall see God, my Savior. I myself shall see him. With my own eyes I shall gaze upon him. 
and in my flesh I shall see God, my Savior. This is the hope that is laid up in my heart, and in my flesh I shall see God, my Savior. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord. May her soul rest in peace. Amen. And in the waters of baptism, you died with Christ. May you now rise with him to share in his resurrection through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Amen. Our entrance hymn, please. <laughs> the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. The grace and peace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, the fellowship and communion of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Good afternoon to everyone. Afternoon. My dear friends, we are here to bury what remains of our sister Anne to show genuine sympathy and solidarity with our loved ones, friends, family members, and uh, to remind ourselves, at least, that we are going to come to this point ourselves, 
One day it's going to be you lying there. One day it's going to be me lying there. And we would like to know that we are in a good place in relation to the master when that time comes. So among many other things, death is a time of reflection. A time of agony and suffering and pain and loss. It is also very importantly a time of reflection. A time for us to think about our lives and where we are going in the next few days and the next few years that we yet have. As we stand before God, we know we are sinful and weak. Let us bow our heads and ask forgiveness. I confess to Almighty God and to you, my brothers and sisters, that I have gravely sinned in my thoughts and in my words, in what I have done and in what I have failed to do through my fault, through my fault, through my most grievous fault. Therefore, I ask, Blessed Mary, ever virgin, all the angels and saints, and you, my brothers and sisters, to pray for me to the Lord our God. And may Almighty God of mercy on us, may he forgive us our sins. May God bring us to everlasting life. in prayer. Almighty Father, we believe that your son died and rose again. Your servant Anne has now passed to her rest in Christ. Grant that through this mass, through our prayers, she may rise in Christ to everlasting joy who lives and reigns with you in the unity and fellowship of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Please be seated for our readings. First reading. A reading from the book of Leviticus, chapter 19, verses 1 to 2, and 11 to 18. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, Speak to the whole community of the sons of Israel, and say to them, Be holy, for I, the Lord your God, am holy. You must not steal, nor deal deceitfully or fraudulently with your neighbor. 
you must not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. I am the Lord. You must not exploit or rob your neighbor. You must not keep back the laborer's wage until next morning. You must not curse the dumb, nor put an obstacle in the blind man's way. But you must fear your God. I am the Lord. You must not be guilty of unjust verdicts. You must neither be partial to the little man, nor overawe by the great. You must pass judgment on your neighbor according to justice. You must not slander your own people, and you must not jeopardize your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. You must not bear hatred for your brother in your heart. You must openly tell him, your neighbor, of his offense. This way, you will not take a sin upon yourself. You must not exact vengeance, nor must you bear a grudge against the children of your people. You must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. The word of the Lord.
reading from the first letter of St. Paul to Corinthians. Sorry, a reading from the letter of St. Paul to the Romans. Alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. The life and death of each of us has its influence on others. If we live, we live for the Lord. And if we die, we die for the Lord. So that alive or dead, we belong to the Lord. This explains why Christ both died and came to life. It was so that he might be Lord both of the dead and of the living. We shall all have to stand before the judgment seat of God. As scripture says, by my life, it is the Lord who speaks. Every knee shall bend before me, and every tongue shall praise God. It is to God, therefore, that each of us must give an account of himself. The word of the Lord. Please stand. Man does not live on bread alone, but on every word that comes from the mouth of God. The Lord be with you. A reading from the Holy Gospel according to Matthew. Glory to you, O Lord. Jesus said to his disciples, In your prayers, do not babble as the pagans do. For they think that by using many words, they will make themselves heard. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So you should pray like this. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. And forgive us our debts, as we have forgiven those who are in debt to us. And do not put us to the test, but save us from the evil one. Yes, if you forgive others their failings, your heavenly Father will forgive you yours. But if you do not forgive others, your father will not forgive you your failings either. The Gospel of the Lord. So all your friends would like to um, extend my deepest sympathies to 
the family members and loved ones of our sister Anne. Um, death is always, always a very difficult time for every one of us, no matter how many times we have experienced it in our lifetime. The passing of a loved one is always traumatic, is always a source of deep pain and loss and agony. And so I'd like to extend um, my deepest sympathies to you and on behalf of the parish priest as well. Uh, and you have had, I'm aware that you have had a lot of deaths in the family in recent years. Uh, I, I always find that there is deep consolation in the life of the person who has passed. If someone has lived a good life, their passing, as painful as it is, uh, their life gives us something to go by. The fact that they have lived a good life, the fact that they have contributed to the human lot in the course of their life uh, gives us hope, gives us strength. And as always, we do get tremendous strength again and consolation from the scripture, scriptures that are at our mercy and that are feeding us at this time. I'd like to concentrate a little bit on the first reading. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, speak to the whole community of the sons of Israel and say to them, be holy for I, the Lord your God, I am holy. Is there anybody in here that want to be holy? Put your hand up, please. Okay, I see about four half hand. People are afraid to put your hand up if you want to be holy. You're striving to be holy. Okay, that's all right. The Lord spoke to Moses. He said, speak to the whole community of the sons of Israel and say to them, be holy for I, the Lord, your God. Speak to the whole community. Not speak to priests and nuns and popes and bishops and pastors. Speak to the whole community of the sons of Israel. And say to them that I am holy. So be holy. Now, there's a lot of things that holiness is not. Holiness is not a looks. Now, a lot of people like to put on a pious look in church and out of church, and they think that that is holiness. That is not holiness. It's not a look. Piety has its place in our lives. If you are in a solemn occasion like Holy Mass, it is expected that you carry yourself in a certain manner. The last funeral we had here last week, uh, when I went outside, a lady remarked to me she was very annoyed how people were walking up and down inside the church. And she's right. You, you came here just for two hours. Well, sit on your butt until it's over. over. Why are people walking up and down, up and down, thinking that they're important because they're walking up and down the place? So you carry yourself in a certain manner according to where you are. When you are on the beach, you behave in one play, way. When you're on the street, you behave in another way. When you go to work, you dress in a particular way. You carry yourself in a particular way. And so too, on a solemn occasion, like having come here to pay our last respects to our sister, we should carry ourselves in a certain manner, which means some degree of piety. Okay, you can research the word a little bit more. 
But it's how we carry ourselves in solemn assemblies. But that's not holiness. There is no looks that is a holy look. Okay? Holiness is neither babbling, babbling, and saying prayers all the time. It's not that. Jesus in the today's gospel says, when you pray, do not pray like the hypocrites. They like to be babbling all the time. Let people see them pray. People see them rolling the rosary. Let people see them doing things. And they think that they're doing something great. So that is not holiness. The scripture text proceeds to tell us what is holiness. My heavenly father is holy, be holy. And it continues. You must not steal or deal deceitfully or fraudulently with your neighbor. Don't steal. Don't deal fraudulently with your neighbor. And a lot of people think they don't steal, but a lot of us steal. We take things that do not belong to us. And we say, I take it. I hustle it. Well, I just pick it up. Does not belong to you. People do that on the workplaces. You know, you go in the workplace, people take the pens, they take the envelopes, they take the paper, they teeth in. But as far as they're concerned, I just take some. Every day you take some. Every time you want some, you take some. You are stealing from your employer. Do not steal or deal deceitfully, deceitfully with your neighbor. You must not swear falsely by my name. People like to say, so help me and his God. And, and God knows and all that. Eh? Do not call God's name in your foolishness. Don't. Do not swear falsely by my name, profaning the name of your God. All these are very serious matters, but we have come to take them for granted. I am the Lord. You must not exploit or rob your neighbor. There are many subtle ways in which we rob people. Many subtle ways. Okay. Many years ago, when we had built this church here to the tune of $1.4 million, shortly afterwards, Hurricane Ivan came and blew off a whole chunk in the top of uh, in, the, in the ceiling and roof. We had to find money to fix it again. I left the workmen and went out to do whatever I went out to do. And came back, and I was impressed that they had done so much work for the day. They had replaced the galvanize. But I went up on the roof myself to discover that they did not put down quarter of the screws that they were supposed to put down. You see how we could be deceitful? Just like that. And don't be surprised they've gone home with the screws. I know of a very well, I almost say documented case, but it's well known in one of these villages after the hurricane when the government gave a set of stuff. When the men came to start building the person home, so the government give you the stuff, the government paying people. You know there wasn't one nail? Not one nail. The owner of the house thiefed the nail. That's how we behave. And we think we are smart and we're going to get away with it. Karma is a bitch. And when it comes for us, we're going to get it. He continues, you must not keep back the laborer's wage until next morning. 
Don't let people who need the dollar for the day to feed their children to do what they have to do. Make a day work for you and you're only holding back the money. Holding back the money. I know a Sabbath man. These people working with him all week. And when Saturday, he used to drive bus. When Saturday, he coming up late from driving the bus. Collecting the money all on the way come up. And when he reached, these people sit down there waiting for them. And he tells them, oh, it's 6 o'clock. It's Sabbath. He can't give them money. Every Saturday, he did it. You see how wicked we are? And we go to church Sunday morning and Saturday and whatever, and nobody but us, we go to church. And we hold it too because we go into church every time. And we better than people who don't go to church. You must not curse the dumb. So in other words, people who are invalid and people who have certain challenges, don't curse them. Don't make life difficult for them. They put an obstacle in the blind man's way. And he doesn't always have to be physically blind. Sometimes we are blind in some way. And we, people like to keep people where they are. Keep people down. So if he doesn't understand, leave him in the dark. Tell him some stupidness and leave him in the dark. You know, very often when we... You know, you go to do some business, they send you to that person, you go to that person. They send you to a next one, they send you to a next one. And what are they doing? They're sending the fool around. But they are the fools. Is going to turn back on them. Uh, he continues, but you must fear God. The fear of God is the beginning of wisdom, we are told, elsewhere in scripture and the fear of God is not to be afraid of God but to revere God so much to live experiencing God's presence every day every moment we are aware that God is not just looking at us from a distance as the song said he is right here looking at us and we must have a holy fear of God. We must so revere God that we know that we live and move and have our being, beings in God and that everything we do and say and every action takes place right in front of God. Therefore, we must act and live with that fear, knowing that God is present. I am the Lord. You must not be guilty of unjust verdicts. We are all guilty of unjust verdicts. How many times we hear things, people say things about people, and we go and we say it convincingly. We even add our portion to it, and we are doing it unjustly. How many times did you hear your friend come back and tell you, you know I was very wrong about what I said about X? How many times have you heard that? We wash our mouths on people, we condemn people, we hurt people, and we move on like nothing happened. And we are good people. We are good people. We go to church every Sunday. You must neither be partial to the neat little man nor overawed by the great. You do not act based on partiality. And yet, that's the order of the day. You must not slander your own people. Grenadians this, Grenadians that, Grenadians that, and you are a Grenadian. And people say that all the time. Don't talk about when you hear they do a little travel. When they go in your yak, they get stupid. Running their mouths on their own people. They come back in Grenada, they run down Grenada. Ah, nah, 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 nah. What did you do for Grenada? What did you do for Grenada? You expect Grenada to turn New York overnight? It won't. The Americans had slaves there. Slaves for hundreds of years to build their cities. And they continue to steal people thing all over the world. Right now they're stealing oil in Syria. They're thiefing it. That's what they're doing. They do that all the time. They thief all around the world. 
and stuff themselves and pretend that they are the greatest. It's going to come to an end. He continues. And you must not jeopardize your neighbor's life. You must not do things to mess up your neighbor's life. You must not jeopardize your neighbor's life. I am the Lord. You must not be a hatred for your brother in your heart. You must openly tell him your neighbor of his offense. This way you will take a sin upon, you will not take a sin upon yourself. You must not exact vengeance. So we take sin upon ourselves when we go and tell Tom, Dick, and Harry about what our neighbor has done to us, but we don't tell the neighbor nothing at all. Everybody else knows. We don't tell the neighbor anything. Nor must you bear a grudge against the children of your people. Many years ago when I was in this church here, there was a very young lady, not a young lady, a young girl who was the most perfect reader. When I say that, she was better than all of us adults. She never stuttered. She never mispronounced a word. She was just perfect. She was sitting with her grandmother. And one day when she stood up to go and read, the grandmother say, friend say, so she alone that could read? A grudge against children. Children. Innocent children. Now when we did the reader's workshop, everybody was invited here. You don't send your grandchild. Somebody grandchild is doing an extremely good job. It's hurting you. And that spreads throughout the community. People get hurt because somebody is going up. Somebody was in a latrine for years, red and biting the bottom. The day they're able to build a little thing, we grudge them. Because we alone must have. We alone must make progress. We must pray to God and God must give us. But he must not give others. You see how stupid we are? We must get. Others must not get. And we say, I am blessed. You must love your neighbor as yourself. I am the Lord. That which we have just been given constitutes holiness. That's what we must strive for. To love neighbor as our own selves, not to be deceitful, not to be dishonest, not to steal, and so on, and so on, and so forth. That's holiness. That's holiness, and we must all strive to be holy. And indeed, our sister Anne strove to be holy. I happen to have known her personally. She was not a big mouth and a noisy person. But she was a very profound human being, a very solid human being, a very humane person who genuinely loved. I am told that she had a prayer in her, in her uh, bathroom area that says, I pass through this life but once. And if there is anything good that I can do for a fellow human creature, I must do it now. Tomorrow is not mine. I must do it now. I must love now. I must care now. I must assist no. I must visit the sick. No. I must clothe the naked. No. I must feed the hungry. No. And so on and so forth. Psalms 
some more stories of her life. One member of the family says, upon reflection, thinks that auntie's illness came about due to grief from the death of Uncle George in 2019. Uncle Ignatius in 2020, Cousin Stephen, her mom, and Uncle Chappie in 2021. That's a lot of death. And she embraced every member of the family in life and in death. She herself suffered a great deal as her body wasted away until she came to her end. People take on the suffering of others. And it's not a bad thing. It's a sign of people's genuine love. St. Paul says, weep with those who weep. We must suffer with those who suffer. And so, Anne had a great heart. She was in solidarity, not only with suffering members of her family, but I dare say with the world. You know, we experience so much pain at the passing of one member of our family. Do you think of the people of Gaza? Do you listen to the stories day after day? Do you hear of some people who have lost 140 and 180 members of their family? These people are deeply family people. These are the people who know all their family by name. These are very traditional people. Could you imagine what it is, your entire family being bombed and killed by Israelites? And they, those baboons in America, they call Christians, talking about Israel, this and the scripture, that, and Israel could just kill, kill, kill people, throwing 2,000 bomb, pong bombs and people homes and just killing people, killing people. Tell them, go to the south. When they go to the south, you bomb them. Wherever they go, they're bombing them. And I hear the Catholic Church say nothing, you know. The Catholic Church says nothing. At Christmas time, the Pope opened his mouth and say some feeble, feeble words. But he could jump up and say, bless same, what? Same sex unions. I don't understand what stupidness is happening in our world at all. I used to like the Pope. But I have a problem. There are real, real issues in the world where people are suffering and being killed and the church is shutting its mouth. Not saying a word. But he could write long, long letter of a kind of stupidness about bless same-sex union. They go raise up my hand and bless it. They go raise up my hand. They will come and hold my hand and raise it up. And bless. Suffering anywhere touches human beings everywhere. Amen. How could we bear to see people suffer and not be touched? And that was Anne. She bore the suffering of others. To the extent that she herself may have been mortally wounded by the suffering of others. The gospel reading tells us Jesus says to his disciples in your prayers, 
Do not babble as the pagans do. For they think that by using many words, they will make themselves heard. Do not be like them. Your father knows what you need before you ask him. So you should pray like this. Talking about prayer, uh, uh, I don't know, people, people are afraid to pray these days. People don't want to pray. People are not interested in praying. Always, Father, pray for me. Father, pray for me. They don't want to pray for themselves. They, no, seriously, they, they, people don't want to pray. We have lost the sense of the hidden power of prayer. And that is why so many of our children are going astray. Because parents in the older days knew that they do whatever they could do for their children. But when it come down to it, they get their children to go down on their knees in the night and pray. How many of you are ensuring that your children and grandchildren are on their knees in the night and pray? How many of you make sure you pray to go to bed before you go to bed, knowing that you may never open your eye in the morning. Our parents taught us and trained us so well that one night I laid on, I was on my knees whole night. Serious. I wasn't better than anybody else, but that's how we were trained. You know how you kneel long and you rest in your elbow on the bed and you pray? And I kept on getting up whole night. I ain't finished. I'm starting all over again. I start again. I start again. When I see six or quarter to six in the morning, I just say stoops and I go down and lie down on my bed. But that's how we were taught. We were taught to pray. Why you think Liga was talking all this? So? Why? Because you don't pray. All sorts of evils are touching people all over the world, all over Grenada. Because we don't pray. When we bring God into our presence, evil will flee. They will flee. So Jesus says, when you pray, don't babble. God knows what you already need. And I'll tell you a secret about prayer which is in line with what Jesus is saying. Try to pray not using many words. Try to pray not even using any words. Try to pray by just trying to quiet down yourself. Now, that is easier said than done. Because if you just try to keep quiet, you're going to see the amount of things that are running in your mind. You know, but I have to do that in the morning. Oh gosh, I forgot to do that today. I wonder if the, the, the stove on. All sorts of things start coming on in your mind. But through uh, earnest practice, you will come to a place where you would be able to eliminate every noise and every thought from your mind. And God infuses your mind and your heart. God comes into your picture into your world and takes over. That's the, the highest prayer you can find, the prayer of the mystics, where we are not just talking to God, but we are listening to God and allowing God to speak. Not even with the agency of our minds and our, th and our thoughts. Our Father in heaven, may your name be held holy. So that's the first aspect of our prayer. We must always revere God in prayer. Hallowed be thy name. Holy be thy name. Above everything, no matter what is taking place in your life today. That's the first statement of prayer. That blessed be the name of God. 
Holy be the name of God. Your kingdom come, your will be done. Let God's will be done in our lives, no matter what is happening. No matter how messy and problems in our lives, let God's will be done. Not just in my life, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Give me my daily bread of patience, of love, of forgiveness. And a little food too. And every little thing that I need for the day. You know. If I ask, I might be asking for the wrong things. And forgive us our debts. We must be mindful of the fact that we are indebted to God because of our follies. As we forgive those who trespass against us, those who have done us wrong, learn to forgive. And do not put us to the test. Save us from the evil one. Yes, if you forgive others their failing, your heavenly Father will forgive you yours. But if you do not forgive others, your Father will not forgive you your failings either. Again, and I think was a profound uh, example of the Lord's Prayer. She was a humble person who took life as it comes. Remember many years ago when she returned to, to Grenada? having sent all her money to build her house and the bill a thief all her money and her house was incomplete, she didn't catch a heart attack and made some more money. May her soul rest in peace. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Let us stand and pray. Let us call trustfully upon God, the Almighty Father, who raised Christ his Son from the dead for the salvation of the living and the dead. Our sister Anne received in her life, in her baptism, the seed of eternal life. May she enjoy the company of the saints forever. Lord, hear us. Our sister was nourished by Christ's body, the bread of eternal life. May she rise again on the last day. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for the souls of our families, relations, and benefactors. May they receive the rewards of their labors. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all who sleep in the hope of resurrection. May they be brought into the light of God's presence. Lord, hear us. Let us pray for all who have come here today to pray in a spirit of faith. May we all attain to the kingdom of glory. Lord, hear us. Hail Mary, full of grace. The Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women. And blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. Hear, O Lord, the prayers of all who call upon you for the soul of your servant Anne. May she be released from all her sins and be made a sharer of your redemption through Christ, O Lord. Please be seated for our offering.
trust Him in His presence.
offering may be acceptable to God, the Almighty Father. As we present, humbly present to you these sacrificial offerings, O God, for the salvation of your servant Anne, we beseech your mercy that she who did not doubt your son to be a loving savior may find him a merciful judge who lives and reigns forever and ever. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. We lift them up to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just. It's our duty and our salvation. Always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Christ our Lord. In Him, the hope of blessed resurrection has dawned, that those saddened by the certainty of dying might be consoled by the promise of immortality to come. Indeed, for your faithful Lord, life is changed, not ended. And when this earthly dwelling turns to dust, an ever, dwell, an ever an eternal dwelling place is made ready for us in heaven. And so with the angels and archangels, with thrones and dominions, and with all the hosts and powers of heaven, we sing the hymn of your glory, as without end we acclaim. the fountain of all holiness. Make holy, therefore, these gifts, we pray, by sending down your Spirit upon them like the rainfall, like the sunshine, so that they may become for us the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. At the time he was betrayed and entered fully into his passion, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke the bread, gave it to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the cup again, he gave you thanks, gave the cup to his disciples, and he said, Take this, all of you, and drink of it, 
For this is the cup of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. The mystery of faith. When we eat this bread and drink this cup, we proclaim your death, O Lord, until you come again. As we celebrate the memorial of his death and resurrection, we offer you, Lord, the bread of life, the cup of salvation. We give you thanks for holding us worthy to be in your presence to make an offering today on behalf of our sister Anne. Humbly we pray that partaking of the body and blood of Christ, we may be gathered into one by the Holy Spirit. And Lord, remember your church, your people spread throughout the world. Bring us together in unity with Francis, our Pope, Clyde, our Bishop, and all the clergy. Remember and, and whom you have called today from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with you, like with your son in a death like his, may also be one with him in his resurrection. And remember all our other brothers and sisters who have fallen asleep in the hope of resurrection and all who have died in your mercy. Welcome them into the light of your face. Have mercy on us all, we pray, that to the blessed Virgin Mary, the mother of God, with the blessed apostles and with all the saints who have pleased you throughout the ages, we may merit to be co-heirs to eternal life and may praise and glorify you through your son, Jesus Christ. For it is through him, with him, in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours, Almighty Father, forever and ever. Let us pray with confidence in the words of our Savior taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. Deliver us, Lord, from every evil. Grant us peace in our lives today. In your mercy, keep us free from sin. Protect us from unnecessary worry, stress, and anxiety as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Lord Jesus Christ, who said to your apostles and to all of us, I leave you peace, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins, look upon our faith. Graciously grant us peace and unity according to your will, who lives and reigns forever and ever. The peace of the Lord be with you always. And with your spirit. And let us share with each other a sign of peace.
Look where you from. Look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. I'm a dog in the world. Doing what I please. Look where you brought me from. My Jesus, my Jesus, look where you brought me from. Look where you brought me from. the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world. Happy are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof, but only say the word and my soul shall be healed. May the body and blood of Christ keep us safe for eternal life.
Brothers and sisters, for this meditation song, we're going to do this Ride Out Your Storm. It was one of my auntie's favorite songs, her most favorite. So we're going to do it for the meditation today. Your morning is coming Just hold on to Jesus
but we're not alone. Hallelujah. You're hurting now. But your answer, your answer is coming. Just hold on to Jesus. Hold on to him. And ride out your storm. Just hold on. Just hold on to Jesus, hold on, hold on, hold on, and ride out your storm. Just hold on, just hold on, just hold on to Jesus, and ride out your storm. Hallelujah, hallelujah. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Jesus. Stand for final commendation. <clears throat> My dear friends, it's our duty to carry out in the traditional manner of God's faithful people the burial of this mortal body. As we do so, we call trustfully upon God from whom all creation has life. May he in due time by his power bring to resurrection with all the saints the body of this our sister which in its frailty we now bury. May God unite her soul with those of all the faithful departed. May she be given a merciful judgment, so that redeemed from death, freed from punishment, reconciled to the Father, carried in the arms of the Good Shepherd, she may deserve to enter fully into everlasting happiness in the company of the eternal King, together with all the saints. Saints of God, come to her aid. Come to meet her angels of the Lord. Welcome her soul and present her to God the Most High. May Christ who called you welcome you. And may the angels bring you into the arms of Abraham. Welcome her soul, present her to God the Most High. Lord, grant her everlasting rest and let perpetual light shine upon her. Present her to God the Most High. We bow our heads in prayer. All merciful Father, we commend the soul of this, our sister, into your hands. We are strengthened by the sure hope that she, together with all who have died in Christ, will rise again on the last day with Christ. We thank you for all the blessings with which you endowed this servant of yours in her life on earth. They are for us a token of your love and of the blessed union of the saints in Christ. Listen then, Lord, in your mercy to our prayers, that the gates of paradise may be opened to your servant Anne, and that we who are left may console one another with words of faith, until we all meet in Christ, and are with our sister eternally, through Christ, O oh Lord. The Lord be with you. And may Almighty God bless us all, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Go in the peace of Christ. Have a good afternoon, everybody. Thank you.
Greetings viewers, kindly stand by as we transition to the cemetery. Please note, this live stream will resume soon as we are ready at the graveside. We thank you for your patience during this transition process.
Let us pray. Lord Jesus Christ, by your own three days in the tomb, you made holy the graves of all who believe in you. And by so doing, you strengthen the hope of resurrection in those whose bodies are subject to decay. Grant, we pray you, that your servant Anne may rest at peace in this grave until that day when you, the resurrection and the life, enrich her with life made new. May she in the light of your countenance behold eternal light in heaven. You who live and reign forever and ever. It has pleased Almighty God to call our sister from this life to himself. 
Accordingly, we commit her body to the earth whence it came. Since Christ, the first fruits of the dead, has risen again and will refashion our frail body in the pattern of his glorious risen body, we commend our sister to the Lord. May he embrace her in his peace and bring her body to life again on the last day. Let us pray for our sister to our Lord Jesus Christ who said, I am the resurrection and the life. He who believes in me, though he die, yet shall he live. And whoever lives and believes in me shall never die. We beg you, Lord, who wept over the dead Lazarus to wipe away the tears from our eyes. Lord, hear us. We ask, O oh Lord, who recalled it to the the dead to life, to grant eternal life to our sister. Lord, hear us. We call upon you who promised paradise to the repentant thief to bring this, this sister of ours to heaven. Lord, hear us. Lead our sister, washed by the waters of baptism and anointed by the holy oil into the company of your saints. Lord, hear us. Bring our sister, nourished by the sacred food of your own body and blood, to the banquet of your kingdom. Lord, hear us. Grant that we who mourn for our sister may be consoled by faith and strengthened by the hope of everlasting life. Lord, hear us. Graciously hear us. Our Father, our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. Show your mercy, Lord, to this departed servant of yours. Since she strove to do your will, let her not be punished for wrongdoing. And as she was united in the true faith with all your faithful people, let her now by your loving goodness be united with the angelic throng through Christ, O oh Lord. Amen. Eternal rest grant unto her, O oh Lord. May your soul rest in peace. May your soul and the souls of all the faithful departed, to the mercy of God, rest in peace. Amen. Dust you are, and dust you have returned. Somebody lead us in a hymn, please. One, two. God is good? All the time? Awesome. All right. So uh, I'm just trying to get something done. Blessed I show
God is good all the time. Okay, we're going to sing God with you meet again. God be with you. No, we're done. We're singing. No, 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 no. We're singing. We're singing.